Hey guys, it's the Plum Dot here, and welcome back to my channel for another speed build. And I am so excited to be sharing this with you guys. I am pretty sure you all have noticed a real lack of speed builds on my channel as of late. And I'm not going to go into the full reason as to why in this particular video, but I do have another video that is already set to go. I'm not sure when it is going to be coming out, but it explains the situation and basically what happened but let's not talk about that let's talk about this let's talk about the carriage house part one and of course it's in parts would it be a the plum dot build if the speed builds weren't in a couple different parts i think not but i am so excited i am so ex i'm so stoked to be sharing this with you guys because i am in love with this build and i know i say that about every flip and build that i put out on my channel but i feel like this one takes the cake so you all know that i love loathe landscaping i hate it and it's just because i'm not very good at it but i seem to have found my mojo with the carriage house i shared a picture on twitter of this build of the exterior with the landscaping mostly complete and it received a lot of love and it warmed my plum little heart down to the core people were like this landscaping is off the hook I'm pretty sure nobody actually said that, but the picture that I shared seemed to get a lot of love. So if you were one of that pe one of the people that showed that picture some love, I really, really do appreciate it. Um, like I said, I really, really do love how this turned out. But let me tell you a little bit more about the carriage house and how we arrived at what you guys are looking at. So I like to participate in the build and share challenges that are run on the forums. And so for April, the brief was to build a one or two bedroom home, one bathroom for a young adult female sim who enjoys the colors baby blue and pink and there had to be shabby chic decor throughout the home. But, and this is a big but, and this is one that I run into a lot with build and share challenges. There was a budget and not just any budget. The budget was 30,000 simoleons. And I was like, Oh my God, how am I going to do this? I struggle like mad with budgets because I'm a self-proclaimed clutter whore and I just want my Sims to have all the stuff. I want stuff everywhere in every nook and cranny and I couldn't do that with the build that I turned in for the build and share challenge, which by the way, I named it the coach house. Um, so I kind of had to hold back a little bit with that build, but I really, really love how it turned out. I think it, it it really did turn out very quite nicely and I'll actually be sharing the coach house with you guys if you would like a cheaper version of this particular build but I thought because I loved how the coach house turned out I wanted to give it a little bit of a glow up and here we are at the carriage house so the coach house has now become the carriage house and some of the key differences um, if you decide to download both of them that you'll notice is that the carriage house is bigger than the coach house was and there's a little bit more cc like the windows in the front are cc although i did use those in the coach house um but the ivy that i am placing everywhere at the moment is um cc so the especially the ones that are on the corner those came from the sims resource and it's by a creator called murano i believe and then i also used um some ivy that came with the sims 3 store that is super expensive i believe it came with dry Dragon Valley and it's called Wisteria and then I used some other ivy that was also in the Sims 3 store which I didn't use in the coach house um, and as well what else is different about this build than the coach house oh major major there's no budget <laughs> I went hog wild with the carriage house and just the exterior and the landscaping alone cost about 45,000 simoleons. So we're already 15,000 simoleons over the budget that was set for the build and share challenge. But like I said, I really love how both of these turned out. And I just think all the plants and the shrubs that I use in the carriage house really make 
this build and also the fact that I raised up the train a little bit and put it on a little hill. I don't know, I just feel like cottages should be built into the landscape or raised up a little bit. I don't know. The coach house is on a flat lot, um, but this one is raised up and I just think it, it makes it look a little more authentic. That's the word that I'm looking for, authentic. Now, you guys know that I don't put out builds to my channel that I am not happy with. That's just not what I do. That's not what I'm about. Um, so when I do landscaping in my other builds, it's not that I don't love how it turns out. It's just that I don't spend loads of time on it. Um, I've recently been watching the Tides Changing build with me series that she's doing in sims 3 she's building a cliffside side lot and she uses different strengths for her terrain paint now in the nine almost nine years that i've been playing the sims 3 i've never really bothered with the terrain strength for terrain paints i knew it existed i've just never done it um so i decided to try that out in the carriage house and so like it makes a world of difference let me tell you it brings a little bit more realism into the game um and i yeah i just never paid attention to it so i'm really glad that i've been watching that series and i decided to follow suit with what ashley is doing and play with the different strengths of the terrain paint and you will see that when we get to that part so here i am putting a fence around the property i've just completed that and i've actually never used this fence um it's not really my style although i don't really know what my style is when it comes to building um but i just think it suits the carriage house so well and it yeah it just works together it just works really well so i'm putting in a pond and you can see that my terrain paint brush is all the way to the right side and it just gives a little more subtlety it brings a little bit more subtlety and realism and i'm playing with different paints uh, which is something that i never do i usually stick to the light dirt um, and if i'm going to put in a pond it's light dirt and that's it and then under all the trees you'll notice that i use light dirt and i just call it a day with that um, but yeah i went crazy with the terrain paint and i think it really brings the build together so i'm just dressing up the pond a little bit putting in my butt corns that i've got to have in every build i've got my rocks there and i'm trying to decide on what tree would look very good behind the pond so i went with a small fir tree and there are other trees that are going to be dotted around the property and uh, we'll get to that momentarily but i'm just going crazy with the flowers and i want to give a shout out to somebody else i've got to give a shout out to my girl girl meets pixels because in all of her streams a lot of people ask where she gets inspiration for her builds and her number one answer is pinterest it's always pinterest now I have a Pinterest, I have a personal Pinterest, but I don't really use it. It's not really my thing. I used it like once for trying to find some gray ombre hair that I could show to my hairdresser. And then I've never really used it again. I was just like, this isn't for me. I'm not into it. But Girl Makes Pixels is like, you have to use Pinterest. It is the best place for inspiration. So before I started building the carriage house, I finally bit, bit the bullet and I made a Sims Pinterest um, and I was pinning things like mad. I was going crazy with things for a cottage type build. So you guys are going to notice like right now I'm putting in the flowers in the front garden. You guys are going to there's going to be a time where you will know that I've been to Pinterest and I've done a little bit of research and I've come back and I've just gone crazy with the flowers because I noticed when I was researching cottage gardens that there is this sort of wild yet manicured look like there are so many flowers and it looks Looks like everything's sort of overgrown but the grass is really nicely manicured and it all just really flows together so yeah you guys will definitely know when I've gone away from this build and come back to it because I just went crazy I went buck wild with the flowers with my buck horns with the shrubs and honestly I love it I love it I'm not gonna stop saying it I'm sorry if 
that annoys you, but I just really, really am so happy with how this turned out because it's just not, it's not my normal jam. It's just not what I do. Um, so it's nice to be able to bring out something to the channel that's a little bit different than what I've had out before. Now this little patch right here is going to be a garden, um, but I actually deleted the the dirt that I have there because when I move my tester sims in, my garden always dies. I don't have a tester sim that's a gardener. Um, so by the time they're finished testing everything on the lot, the garden has just shriveled to nothingness. So the plants are the last thing that I am going to place on this lot. Um, and it won't be in this part because obviously my tester sims at this point hadn't been in the house. So here it is, I've been to Pinterest, I am back and I have moved the rocks away from the house a little bit. So it kind of follows the train of the hill that I've created. Um, and I'm just putting in every flip and flower that I could find. And at first I was kind of going with a color scheme, but again, when I went to Pinterest and I had a look, it was just all sorts of colors and it was wildflowers and it was poppies and it was hydrangeas and azaleas and sunflowers and it was just everything. And so I really wanted to bring that into this build to make it a little bit more authentic. And I think it did the trick, but you guys can definitely know what you think down below. And here I am um, adding more flowers, more buckhorns because I don't think you can have too much in a cottage build. I'm serious. Go check out Pinterest if you guys haven't. If you don't believe me, there's flowers everywhere. Now, another thing that I did in this build, which is not something that I normally would do, and probably, actually, I don't think I've ever done this in a build, but this is another sort of tip uh, that I took from the Tides Changing. She's got a tutorial out on her channel about how to do vaulted roofs. So on the second floor, there is actually a vaulted roof, and you're not gonna be able to see it in gameplay, but for pictures and things like that, it really creates this realism effect um and i feel like the carriage house is all about realism a little bit that's what i wanted to bring into this something that you may see in real life that's what i was envis envisaging um when i was building it so i didn't do that part on camera because it just would have been a lot of like jiggery pokery with cfe and nobody's got time to watch me do that for about an hour it took me quite some time to figure out how i was going to do it because i actually did the vaulted ceiling after I'd finished the entirety of the exterior and the landscaping, which I don't recommend it. If you're going to do a vaulted ceiling, make sure it's one of the first things that you do after you put on the roof on your house and then your life will be a lot easier. But I got there in the end and the vaulted ceiling just looks pretty darn ace if I do say so myself. So I feel like there's a lot of things that I did in this particular build that I don't normally do. Um, but here's something that I don't normally do for my channel. In fact, I don't think I have ever done this in the almost year that I've been on YouTube for any of my speed builds. I'm actually putting out part one before I've even started on the interior of this build. I loved it that much that I wanted to bring it out to my channel to share with you guys as soon as possible. Now I am hoping that I will be able to finish this. I'm gonna get my Tushin gear and I'm going to try and get the interior done so that I can have that part of the video up early next week along with a download link for both the carriage house and the coach house um, because I don't want to keep you guys waiting waiting for the second part. Um, but yeah, like I said, I was just too excited not to share and to keep this to myself that I just had to get part one out. So I don't really know what the interior of the carriage house is going to be. I believe I've laid it out to have two bedrooms and two bathrooms, but I don't know you know how the decor is going to go i think i'm gonna have to go back to pinterest and get some more inspiration seriously guys that website has changed my life and i blame girl meets pixels because i have spent hours on that website just pinning anything that looks amazing it's such a glorious site now one of the last things that i'm doing for this build is that i'm actually going through and changing all of the grass texture because like i said um a lot of what I saw on Pinterest, oh my God, I'm becoming a Pinterest whore. How many times have I mentioned it? <laughs> 
a lot of the cottage gardens on Pinterest had these manicured lawns, but these wildflowers. So I went with, I believe it's called autumn grass. I went with that and I left the edges, the grass that you see in Moonlight Falls, which is where I built the carriage house. Um, and again, it brings a little bit of realism to the build. And as well, you guys will notice the um, dirt that I put around the pathways. That's something else that I never do in any of my builds, but it's really the little touches that make the build and just so in love with it and if like as if I couldn't get enough flowers and shrubs I'm back again with the flowers and shrubs and that little pat or that little like section that I put on the left side of the stairs that just increases even more it just gets bigger and bigger I couldn't stop myself but I feel like you couldn't have too much for this build at first I was afraid it was going to overpower the build but Pinterest confirmed that that was not true. <laughs> so when I shared the picture on Twitter of the carriage house, of the exterior and the landscaping, someone actually commented that they wanted to move in their ferry. And I thought that was a really cute idea. And I could totally see a ferry living here. So I really want to know down below in the comments, what type of Sims do you see living in the carriage house let me know because i would be interested to know what you guys think now don't judge me but i have been watching a lot of made in chelsea and if you guys don't know what it is it's a scripted reality tv show in the uk um and it's like trash tv but it's been my guilty pleasure so i kind of imagine that the carriage house is like an outhouse an outhouse that sounds like a toilet an outbuilding to like a country villa that these made in chelsea characters um visit every flipping weekend it seems oh to have such a life either that or because the royal wedding is coming up maybe this could be like harry and megan's honeymoon suite or something yeah right it, their honeymoon suite is probably going to be like ten thousand times bigger than this but anyway that's what I see. I want to know what you guys see. But I think I'm going to wrap up this very first part of the carriage house. Love you and leave you guys with some music for the rest of the video. But if you enjoyed it, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. And if you guys aren't already subscribed and you like what you see, why don't you go ahead and hit that button. Don't be a plum stranger now, guys. Bye!